In this lesson, we'll learn how we can create and work with text here in InDesign. All right, so I've loaded up another project file here, and we're going to change things up just a little bit. So if you want to follow along, open up project file 08 underscore begin. And what I'd like to do for you first is show you a couple ways that we can create type here in InDesign. Now, there's two main tools, depending on what type of type that you're after. Now, the main tool is right here in the tool panel. It's called the type tool, and the keyboard shortcut for that is T. And just like with the frames, we need to click and drag out a frame for our type to live in. So I clicked and dragged, and what I'm left with here is a flashing text insertion cursor. So we can just begin typing. This is a text frame. And if we switch to our selection tool and zoom in on that, you can see here that the text lives in that frame. And again, you know, we can resize that, we can scale that, and we can do whatever we want to to the frame itself. Now, that is your basic text in a frame. Now, there's one other way to create text. It involves a path. So let me go ahead and draw in a path here. I'm just going to come in and draw in a really quick path. We're going to make it nice and curved, just sort of like that. Now, the next tool I want to show you is the, called the Type on a Path tool. I'm going to come over here and get rid of that stroke so we're not dealing with that black line. All right, the Type on a Path tool is nested right underneath the Type tool, and we'll go ahead and select that here. And now when I mouse over that path, it's invisible, so well, there we go. Uh, notice that a little plus sign comes up next to my mouse cursor. So I'll click on that path, and we get a flashing text insertion cursor. But it looks a little different because it's oriented horizontal. Well, uh, let's go ahead and type in some text on this path. You can see here that the type that I'm creating actually follows the path that we've created. So uh, this is a little more specialized way to create type. Depending on uh, what exactly you're looking for, these are the two main methods. Now, uh, more than likely, if you're working here in InDesign, you're going to be working on larger projects, and oftentimes the content for these projects is generated by another individual. So you'll get a, a, a file like a Microsoft Word file, something like that, with content that you need to integrate. So and we actually looked at a Microsoft Word file in the previous lesson. And let me just delete those, because we're going to use it to set up some type in this layout here. So uh, work on an article here. We have a body of type we're planning for right about here. So uh, let me come in and bring up my place dialog. We'll select our Word file. We have loaded up our cursor with text. And now these pink lines here are the margins for our document. We haven't talked about those yet, but they were defined when this document was created. So uh, I'll go ahead and draw in my text frame. I'd like it to be within those margins here. So I'm going to just draw that in roughly. And we can always resize this frame if we need to. But as soon as I draw in that text frame, our Microsoft Word document gets dropped right in there. So uh, now looking at this text, it's not exactly very desirable. There's not a lot of formatting going on here, and I'd like to really spice this up just a little bit. So before we go about doing that, I'm going to open up a couple more panels that we're going to need. Uh, we're going to come up to our window dropdown. We're going to look under Type and Tables. We're going to grab both our Character panel, drag that up and out of the way. Then we're going to come over here and grab our Paragraph panel as well. Now they've opened up separately. Let me just drag those into the same panel group here, so we've got them tabbed. Now, with this text frame selected, we can see that it is Times New Roman, regular, and it's 12 points. And uh, there's several other settings here that we're probably not going to have time to go over. But uh, let's go through formatting this text and making it look just a little bit nicer for this article. So uh, you know, the first thing I'd like to do is maybe change the typeface here. Now, uh, I'm thinking that we've got a, looks like we've got a header here, and then we've got some body copy. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select all the body copy here. And let's change the, the typeface for that. Let's change that to the font uh, delicious. Now, again, I can't include the font files with the project files for this course for you, but if you want to check the fonts folder, you'll find a text file that will point you to links on the internet where you can download these free fonts. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Let's change the size of the typeface here. Let's go ahead and change that down to about 10 points. Now, that may seem kind of small, but something that's directly influencing that is the space between our lines. And I think that we don't quite have enough space between the lines of type. So uh, I'm actually going to change this letting setting right here. Right now it's set to 12 points. I'm going to bump that up just a little bit. Let's go to about 13.5. 
And that seems a little bit better. Now, we've got some other problems here. We've got, looks like, two paragraphs, and they're bleeding together. We're going to resolve that here in just a minute. But let's go ahead and change the typeface for the header. Let's go ahead and set this over to, let's go ahead and do code bold. And I'm going to increase the size of this one to, let's make it pretty large. Let's make it about 25 points. Now, I'd like to maybe space this out a little bit. These letters are pretty tightly uh, organized together here. So what I want to adjust is the tracking. I'm going to select my type. I'm going to come over here to tracking. And we can drop this down and choose one of these presets, or we can type a value in on our own. Let's see what about 100 looks like. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and talk about the paragraph formatting just a little bit, because right now we're aligned to the left. We've got this kind of this ugly ragged edge out here to the right, and you know we've got these boxes here that our text frame is bordering. So uh, let's maybe consider coming over to our paragraph panel at this point. And let's maybe come in and select our body copy. Now, we don't have to select entire paragraphs. We can just click our mouse cursor into one of the paragraphs. And notice up here at the top, we have our alignment options. We can center that paragraph. We can right align it. But I think what I'd like to do is justify this type. So we'll just set it to justified. We'll click down in this paragraph, set it to justified as well. And for the header, I'd like to do something a little different. Maybe we right align that header here. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but when my text insertion cursor, is, or my type tool, rather, is activated, and you can see my text insertion cursor flashing in this body of copy, my control panel is changing to an entirely different set of controls. Now, let's not, we're not going to go through all these here, but let me just kind of tell you how this is set up. Now, notice here at the far left, we have a couple of buttons. We have a capital letter A, and then we have a paragraph symbol. Now, with this letter A pressed in, most of the options here are going to be character formatting related. Things like typeface, uh, type size, letting, uh, things like things of that nature. And as a matter of fact, they're all type settings over to about, oh, right about here. Then we have some paragraph related stuff. Now, if we click this paragraph button below that, we're going to receive mostly paragraph formatting options here. All the way over to right about here, and you can see again we can change some, some type related stuff here. So that's the way the control panel is set up with the type tool active. And what I'd like to do at this point, let me go ahead and zoom in here, is what I'd like to do is I'd like to address the spacing issue between our paragraphs. And you know, as a matter of fact, maybe we could use a little bit of space between our header and this first paragraph. So let me go ahead and just select a portion of both these paragraphs here. And let's look over here, kind of in this center area, at some of these spacing options. You can see here we have uh, our spacing options for the left side and the right side of our, our copy. We have things like first line indent, things like that. But what I'm going to focus on is uh, the space in front, or the space before our paragraphs. This setting right here. I'm going to come in here and let's bump that up to something like 0.125 inches here. And I think that looks pretty good. That's allowing, I think, ample space in between each of those elements. We can always zoom back and take a look at that. All right, so looking pretty good here. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I have a really subtle grid here. If we zoom in, you can kind of see this really light gray grid, and I really don't want that going through my type. So this would be a great opportunity to apply a fill color to the container for this type, to the type, to the text frame. So let me go and do that. Let's come over here, grab our swatches panel, and select the fill color here, making sure that the container button is selected. And I'll go ahead and set that to paper here. So we have a nice white background behind our type. Now, the last problem I'd like to address here is sort of the issue that this type is almost touching my boxes here. Well, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, what I think I'd like to do is maybe create some space around our types, sort of some padding in this frame to where the where the text is it cannot it cannot go into. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select the text frame and there are actually some options for this text frame that we can access. Let's go ahead and come up to our object drop down and we're going to look for text frame options right here. Go ahead and open that up, and we get this nice big dialog. Now, there's actually another way we can get to this dialog. It's actually pretty simple. All we need to do is hold down our Alt key and double click on the text frame, and we'll bring up these text frame options. Now, again, a lot of options in here, things like specifying the number of columns, the width of the columns, the gutter width of the columns, things like that. But what I'm looking at here is the inset spacing. And this inset spacing is actually going to provide a little bit of padding 
for our text frame. Well, let me hit preview here so we can see as I'm actually putting this padding in. So we have here padding for the top, the bottom, the left, and the right of our text frame. And then there's a little chain link in between. We can hit this button and all those four sides will be linked, but I don't know if I want to do that just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and apply to the left and the right first. Let's go ahead and bump this over, say to maybe half an inch. I think that's the side of, size of our grid. What I'm actually doing is trying to line this up with the grid that we have specified here. So we've got this little, this little faint gray line right here. I'd like my type to end right at that line. And okay, that's looking pretty good. Looks like we've actually got our headline just a little bit too big, but we can fix that here in just a moment. I'd like to come in and uh, maybe add a little spacing at the bottom for right now. Let's come in and add about a half inch at the bottom as well. Now I'm going to hit OK on this for right now so we can come in and resize our text frame. I'm going to drag that down just a little bit here. And let's address this issue right here with our headline. I only want this to be on one line here. So we could come in here and change the size of the type, bump that down maybe a little bit. Or we could always come in here and adjust the tracking. Let me come in here and select all that type again. And let's set it back to 100. And we'll just bump that down. That looks pretty good. We bumped that down to 90. I think that looks pretty good. Let me go ahead and jump into preview mode so we can take a look at this. All right, I think it's looking really good. Now, just to finish it off, I may come in here and resize our text frame just a little bit more just to get the baseline or the bottom of the letter forms in the headline maybe aligned with the bottom line of this orange square. And I think that looks looks pretty good. It gets the bottom of this second paragraph almost in line over here with the bottom of our image. So things are lining up. I think we're looking pretty good. Now, there are some things that we can do to save these image formatting settings and reuse them on other bodies of copy throughout maybe an entire publication. They're called styles. We have character styles and paragraph styles. Now that's really out of the scope of this course, but we definitely have courses in our library you may be interested in checking out if you want to learn more about both character styles and paragraph styles. So in this lesson, we've learned how to create and format text here in InDesign. In the next lesson, we'll pick up where we leave off here and we'll learn about both rulers and guides.